All right, hi everyone. Let's see if we can get back on this train. So obviously I had to take a little break from my usual workflow for a few days just to try and get the Blendstream website up and running properly. What I've done now is I've written out a moderation guide. So anyone wanting to help on the Blendstream website has something they can read through that I can hand to them. And then once they're comfortable with that, I can set them up as a moderator so they can start helping us review different Blender short films to be presented on the site. If you're new here, by the way, because I don't know if like many people come to this channel or new, we do these little podcast episodes every now and again, and I talk about some projects we've been working on. And this one I'm talking about now is a new website we've created to help people connect with different Blender short films. So short films made with the software Blender. I'm very happy with how it's been going so far. A lot of people seem to like it. And it's also cool finally seeing some of the shorts appearing by themselves without me having to review them. That's because of one of the new moderators. So yeah, it's going to be cool to see where it goes from here. I've been really impressed with the quality of some of the submissions. It's always, you know, really tricky when there are edge cases which kind of ride the line of quality because sometimes you'll get people submitting content that's like really, really low quality, but you can tell they put a lot of effort into it. And there were some really interesting ideas like narratively or artistically. So kind of riding on that balance of, uh, you know, do we approve it or not? But in the moderation guide, I've given some advice about that. So yeah, that's all going well, but I really do need to move on to other projects. So, you know, it's nice to finally have some moderation help. But let's talk about other things. So on Gumroad, Gumroad have been developing new features recently. One of them is the purchasing power parity, PPP feature, which is where we can basically have it so our product prices automatically adapt to where the buyer is located. So for example, people living in parts of the world which are kind of lesser developed economically and who the pricing of say like, I don't know, $60 for something is like way out of proportion for their cost of living. What this feature does is it automatically applies discounts for them based on what country they're from. And it says there are some extra checks about, you know, kind of anti-VPN stuff, but I'm not really that bothered about it. But I've enabled it on my Gumroad now. So if there's anyone from parts of the world with like a wildly different cost of living or a currency that just doesn't really hold up against a dollar or the pound, then you're probably entitled to a percentage discount. Again, don't ask me for discount code. That should be like an automatically applied thing because it's an account wide setting that I've activated. See, so yeah, hopefully that helps some people access the products. Another thing about Gumroad is um, something we've been waiting for for a long time is proper revenue splits because Blender Market already supports this and it will open the way for more collaboration. The thing is our two main storefronts as Blender creators are Gumroad and Blender Market and there are other ones but those are like the two main ones. And if I'm releasing something on one I want to release it on the other as well so we have that good parity again because the income is actually quite properly split. Like on a lot of the months the Gumroad income is pretty much the same as the Blender Market income even though there are slightly different purchasing behaviors between the two audiences. For example people are more inclined to buy higher priced products on Blender Market than Gumroad. And I think that's to do with a trust factor of the website. And also it's a more dedicated audience on Blender Market that is. But I've spoken a lot with other creators in the past about doing collaboration products, which would be great because we could really help each other to make money and kind of like jive together and inspire each other. And it just gives each other an excuse to actually like follow through with larger projects. But there's always been that one big roadblock there where, you know, the revenue splits on one of the sites, but not on the other. And then because that's a bit of a roadblock, you think, okay, well, we could do it. We'd have to only do it on one website, which I did with Charon once, the procedural MOS product. But without that being available on Gumroad, then I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. And of course, you can always say, oh, well, you know, you can do the revenue splits manually yourself, but that's extra effort. And we've spoken about like the small hurdle problem before, where if there's any small hurdle towards a project, sometimes that's enough to just stop it dead in its tracks. Now, I was aware of this problem years ago, which is why in 2019, I emailed the CEO of Gumroad, Sahil, and asked him about this. And he was kind of confused because he said, well, why don't you just use the affiliate system to do it? And I said, well, because Gumroad has a discoverability system. So anyone finding the products through that, the revenue won't be split. Like everything would have to come through the links. Also, if you wanted to have more than two people for a product, you won't be able to do that. So they said, yeah, that's a reasonable concern. And that they would aim to try and do it in 2020. 2020 came around, it didn't happen. 2021 came around, it didn't happen. 2022 came around, it didn't happen. So I was really annoyed with that because I was thinking, God, all these projects that we wanted to do with creators going back years just aren't happening. And then recently they did a thing where well, they've done it a couple of times now where they put an emoji out on Twitter and they ask people to guess what the new feature is because it's related to the emoji and the first person to guess will make money. It'd be something like a $500 giveaway. And I always hate those things because you, you can see like people that are really desperate. They just post like everything they can. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Chasing after that $500. But one of the emojis was two people holding hands. And Ben and I were like, yes, finally, are we getting proper revenue splits? What else could it be? Two people holding hands. Are we finally being able to split the revenue between two people? 
So we waited and waited and it came around and it wasn't that. It was team accounts, which really isn't much or anything. It's just saying you can have multiple emails associated with one account. So you could have like an admin person or someone managing the prices of things, sales, whatever. We were like, God damn it, when are they actually going to do it? They've got the code there. They already know how to split revenue with affiliates. So why not just split revenue on all of the sales for a product? So I put a little tweet out because I was disappointed and I said, oh, me and another Blenny creator were really hoping for proper revenue splits this time, waiting to do these collab projects. Is it coming, Papa? Now it did originally say, is it coming, Daddy? But Ben took me out of that one, but I really wanted to write Daddy. But then after, <laughs> after that tweet went out, finally, they went back to an original poll they did, which asked people whether they would use the revenue splits. And it was an overwhelming yes. Back in 2021, if Gumroad let you collaborate with other creators and split the payouts for you, would you use it? Yes, 75%. And after I wrote my Papa tweet, they went back to that and said, we're finally building this. So what's the moral of the story here? Cool people, Papa. You might make a difference. So yes, apparently revenue splits are finally coming. It's been years. And hopefully we'll open the way for great things because we can do so much as a team. You know, there are so many creators that I could make stuff with and it'd be really, really cool. And we can help each other because not only will we all make money at the same time, but we can make things which are more valuable than we would be able to do individually. And that also means that people get really cool stuff. So yes, we'll see how that goes. It'd be a really good excuse to finally carry on with my modular material series, which I really wanted to do more for. I've got some stuff in mind for helping with like architectural visualization and artwork as well. And I feel like a lot of people will like it all to do with procedural materials. So yeah, if you're interested in making stuff for Gumroad, then that's something to know about as well, that the ability to collaborate and split the revenue should be coming in the future. Next on the agenda, going back to the idea of the um, how to learn Blender in 2023 video, you know how in an earlier podcast, I said that I really wanted to do that because I have like a pedigree of the series of telling people like how to learn Blender through like a presentation style video. And that I kind of waited a little bit because every other Blender creator was doing one. And I thought, okay, again, after that podcast, surely it's time now, surely it's time. And then I think Smith has just come out with one. And there was another Portuguese creator which came out with one as well. But I think I've been mentioned in both again. So it just seems like there's a continuous feed of people doing the best way to learn Blender in 2023 videos. It's crazy. We're a super original community. <laughs> I mean, we are actually, but it's just funny to laugh about it. So let's go back to the conversation on productivity, because obviously we've been speaking about that quite a lot over the last month. One of the things I've started doing is making little guides for myself intended to help maximize the usefulness of any particular thing that I do. This goes along with the Optiflow technique that we've been talking about. So for example, there are a lot of parts of my like content development process where I feel like things are missing and that more could be done. So for example, there are a lot of things I do like in my spare time. An example would be Discord art challenges, right? Have to announce the challenges, keep track of the time, review the submissions, put them on the Discord Hall of Fame and on my website. And these things in isolation are fun, but they don't really like expand or kind of contribute to like anything else. So I've started noticing things like that in my content development where I think, okay, well, how can we make this more useful? So I've started writing out a list of questions for every particular type of work I do, whether it's like a project update or whether I'm just like making notes for things. For example, for the community roundup videos on the main channel, if I'm making notes on a particular project, I'm like, okay, you have just finished making a note, Curtis. Here are all the things you can do with that now. So rather than just thinking about that as being done and then getting depressed at the fact that there's like 15 other projects to make notes about, you've just done one and you can do something useful with it. So for example, if you feel like it, you can make a short talking about it. You could add that to your Instagram reels. You know, you could do your TikToks, whatever, but also you could do a story about it if you think it's significant. So just keep those things in mind because rather than just seeing this as a piece of work that's kind of like pointless individually, even though it's useful in the grand scheme of like video preparation, you've done this one thing, here are all the other things you can do with it to relieve some of that anxiety of growth or content production. So again, another thing would be like the Discord art challenges. Okay, well, you've just announced the winners, but also, you know, you can put them on Twitter and Instagram as well if you really wanted. Also on the community feeds for YouTube. Now, not everything will be appropriate. So for example, when working on product updates, updates or like add-on updates. Some things are really boring, some things are more interesting than others. So what I've done is I've kind of laid out like a priority list. So it's like, okay, you've just finished working on an update for something. Maybe it's an add-on or an art project. Take a look at this list. Is it significant enough to be put on the next newsletter? If yes, then add it to our newsletter column in my series building page, which is what I use to kind of like prep content. Is it significant to show in an Instagram story? Yes. Okay, we'll do that then. Okay, if it's more significant than that, can we make a short about it? Yes. Okay. Well, for the second channel, for the main channel, then do those. Okay. If it's more significant than that, is it something you could do a main channel video about? Okay. Then start making notes over here. So basically it's just like a little guide with like this list of importance going, okay, you've just made something, check the guide 
how far down on this do you think it goes? And here's what you can do with that now. Because it's so easy when jumping between different projects to forget about all of those little formulaic things. And also when you're doing micro tasks like that, so the most micro task out of all of those would be the note taking for community projects, because in those community roundup videos, it could be like, I don't know, 14 to 20 different things. It's really easy to procrastinate on those because it doesn't really feel like there's any like benefit in between all of those little tasks, so to speak. So it's a lot of effort, like a lot of cognitive effort to do in one go. But if you can get benefits from each of those, then I think that kind of helps with the work. So that's what I'm looking at now. It's like, okay, creatively for every little thing we do, can we do something more significant with it? So again, like if there's a really good project for a community roundup video, instead of just talking about it in that video, we can also do a proper short for it or maybe a different post about it, kind of describing what we like and sharing it in other places as well. So basically every stepping stone towards that project has something else to it. So it just doesn't feel like we're doing useless work up until the end. Hopefully that makes sense. It might be really confusing. But again, it's just kind of like about doing this cognitive help process going back and forth. I've made something reminding myself what I can do with it, make something different, remind yourself what you can do with it. It's almost like having a conversation with yourself in the past who has already thought about that. So another example would be I've written down here podcasts. If there are like any particular moments in the podcast which you feel like are higher value than other parts of the podcast, we can say, okay, take a snippet of that within 60 seconds and turn that into a short as well, or at least like a snippet for something else. Or if you came to any particular revelations, which can be condensed into a few sentences, well, that could be like a post for Twitter or something. So basically I'll just look at my notion and go, okay, podcasts, subtitle after podcast has been edited, consider these things. And then it's basically what I just said. If you found anything important, do this. If you found anything that could be snippeted into like 60 seconds that's significant, then do this. So it's almost like a walkthrough guide, I suppose, if you think about it that way. So coming to creating artwork, this will be another example. So I've got two subtitles here, while an art piece is being created and after an art piece has been created. So while it's being created, consider recording the process to create a short in the future to music. So this would be like a low priority piece of content. Of course, it doesn't really cost me anything to record while I'm making artwork. And it'd be a really quick thing to edit because there's no narration. You know, you just take the snippets of the best moments and put music over it. So you could easily create a short to add to the pool of content, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit. After the art piece has been complete, then share it across platforms. I've got a list of all the platforms. And and also there's a consideration if I do live streams in the future, it's like, okay, well, if you like this art piece, make a note about it in the live stream section of the board. So basically writing these walkthroughs for myself to help remind me what I can do with what I make. And hopefully I can improve them over time as well to see what people respond to and what they don't. And again, like everything we talk about productivity wise, this isn't like a hard rule. A lot of days I just want to be a bit more relaxed about content and don't really care about it. But I like having these things here because it's, if you feel particularly ambitious on a certain day, or if you have the energy to do these things, then here is a guide written by you in the past to you in the future, basically giving you a helping hand. Say, we know you won't remember to do this in the moment, but just in case you want to, here are all the things you could do with what you've just made. So hopefully that makes sense. I mean, it probably doesn't. There are a couple of stories I want to share. That's something I'm interested in doing. There are a few like life stories that I'm kind of willing to like open up about now, but I might save those for dedicated videos. One of them's to do with like being a child actor in a museum exhibition and another one's about spending some time in South Africa. And there are some other things, maybe I'll save them. But yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, get back into this flow. Um, what else is going on? Having more house viewings, trying to sell this place. Someone seems to be interested. We'll see how it goes. Cause you know how it goes. People sound really interested and give every indication that they are, but then, but then one day, it just disappears. <clears throat> Dating. Anyway, if you made it this far, put a, uh, or maybe put a coin in the comments because we spoke about the purchasing power parity at the beginning. Yes, do that. Feel free to support me in any way you like. I mean, realistically, the best way you can support me on this channel is just by watching the videos all the way through, but you're free to do whatever you like. So yeah, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you next time.